could have tagged out of the truck first thing this morning. We're over here at the spot that we keep seeing a bunch of whitetails. We've been driving past here a lot, haven't hunted it, but we're hunting it today and didn't make it far. Made it about from here to here. We had deer in range, so it's a good sign. It's gonna be hard to shoot. get to that bend and look down in there. We certainly don't have much cover. Should have just stayed right where we were. go down in the bedding area that we were hoping they'd be in. I thought they might stay down in there though, just about like how they didn't pop right back out, you know? But, oh well. Wind gets these things, both mealies and whitetails, out of control. No, I'd have shot him. No, I'd have shot him for sure. Should have just been patient there. I thought maybe they were going to bed down in there. Well, I said you should just wait a little bit if they're going to do that. Right, right, yeah, you're a great point. Just impatient, just rushing things. That's what happens when things aren't going your way. <laughs> Start rushing things. We're not even gonna let it affect us because there's a dang good chance there's another one or he goes right down into that patch where we're planning on glassing anyway. Got a hot doe. That's why he's being so weird. No, it's over. <laughs> you well. <laughs> the thing about the rut is it's completely over, but this one is rutting. On December 8th. Well, I guess yeah, when you consider second rut. <laughs> oh, and he just laid with these doe. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know they're pretty careless and they're pretty uncomfortable when they're not even getting up when you're driving that close to them. Good luck! These deer holding tight. These deer holding tight. A couple nice ones. I don't know what we want to do on that one. Y'all just be good. Y'all just be patient. There's so much snow, we seriously can't even see you guys, so I wouldn't worry about it. I hold tight, being good. Those, those ones are being real good. Can we get like out of sight on this road with those deer? No? Yeah, I think we probably will at some point. I mean, we might be able to just get right up there at their level and I think the wind's right for it. It should be easy to video. <laughs> You got a lot of things you got to try to keep dry. It's not all that fun. The biggest one's bedded. If they really don't care that we're here, do you think we can just get out on this side of the truck and get ready and slide up? And I think we can definitely back the truck up and just put it behind that hill. It just seems like the snow's wet. Yeah, it's definitely wet. The hardest part is probably going to be keeping snow off the lens so you can actually see. Right. Good a wind as you're going to have. I don't think they're going to be able to hear you if you're going real slow. From 40. If you get to 30, they might hear you crunch the snow. I'm going for 10. <laughs> I'm gonna wear my bino pack. You know, this is a poor man's trick here. Get them zipped up in there. Some dry nose. I'm gonna have to get some snacks. I'm just letting these deer saddle. It's more for them than for me. Yeah. Can you grab one of those? <laughs> no! Here we go. Should be interesting. My confidence is low, mostly just because the snow's I don't even know what you call it, crunchy, squeaky. Compacting yeah. snow. 
It's a wet, dense snow. It's not a light, fluffy snow. Yeah. I think that's because it's like just above freezing. Yeah, it's barely. Yeah, 33. Cole's gonna stay back because it's basically raining, so it's not good for the camera. So we feel like if he stays closer to the truck, he'll be able to not fry up the camera. Which maybe I'll see you in 20 minutes. Maybe I'll see you in four hours. That's fine. Okay. <laughs>
I didn't see any blood until he stopped way down there when he died. As soon as it hit him, blood just went. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, that's not a bad deal. Hey, dude, yeah, <laughs> can you believe that? Could you even believe that that no. worked out the way it did? No. Dude, great job, man. Yes, yes. I watched him for so long, and he was at 40. 40 for the longest time. <laughs> and then he turned and went out really close. And I kept just inching my pin in. But then when he took those couple steps, I thought, you know what, Zach, you gotta at least draw the bow back. And dude, I was like, I try to settle the pin. It ain't it, it will not settle. I can't even get it on a hay bale, let alone on these vitals. Yeah, they got hectic for a while. There after the shock is culted off running. <laughs> Batteries went dumping out of his pocket. I got him all though. Did you? And then that camera cover. I'm watching you run a bait and it's blowing like 40 feet in the air right here. <laughs> and then it made it all the way down there. You know, it's two years in a row I've had the craziest weather conditions when I've shot a buck with Nick and then now you. <laughs> Definitely never shot a buck on December 8th. At least not with a bow. The wind is insane, but what makes it worse is this little hard snow that just is like needles on your face. Oh, wait till you get up there. <laughs> it is crazy up there. Camera gear. You know in two seconds this is going to be getting covered again. I'm excited to say that it's time for a walkthrough of a successful hunt. <laughs> <laughs> it's been too long. Yes. I don't know why the two bucks ran. I don't know if they heard something. I don't know if they just wigged themselves out. He chilled out. When it's windy like this, deer freak themselves out. I feel pretty strongly about that. Where these two deer, they might have ran for no reason. Man, I had nothing to do with us. Yeah. If it was us, I don't know why this other one would have hung around. I agree. It seemed to make more sense based off that wind pole to go up high. You know, with a strong wind over the top in hill country, you can get wind to go over deer. Got to a point where I said, this is the only option because I can't sit out here all day 100 yards from him <laughs> and hope to get him, you know, or I'm going to freeze to death. So then I just backed off the back of this. So uh, whenever I'm sneaking up to a high point, I try to use some sort of cover and these yucca plants are great for it. And I just popped up here and I got eyes on him again. Ugh. Over here. And this is where the wind gets super crazy. I just moved up here pretty quick. Because it was not very nice. If you come down here, it's not near nearly as bad. I was originally sitting here and I couldn't see him, but I knew he had to be somewhere right here. I actually saw him turn to walk further away. The best way that I found to like be quiet in this crunchy snow is if I would slide my foot and go like that. And that compacted the snow. It's not much, but it was enough to make me feel confident. So I slid up here pretty quick, slid to here, and I pretty much just sat in this position the whole time. And he was feeding. Right down there. I shot him about right. Yeah. You can see blood right down there. Pretty brutal. This is my glove. <laughs> this could get sketchy. Actually, I want to take a picture of this. <laughs> may never be here again. I'm, I'm telling you what, bud. I'm so glad we don't have to be in this anymore. All right, let's get down there. Don't fall. Video one repair even had half the clue of all the things that they're fixing my cameras for over the years. <laughs> Hold my binos up to just see ice. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole way he was running across that bottom, I could see blood just painting the snow. There's my arrow. Looks good. I'm not sure what I hit 
it might be far forward. It kind of seemed like it was forward. It might be right at the vital V, but it might be in front of that too. See that yucca up there? Just to the right of that rock face. That's where I would have been. 31. About 31. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. I mean, look at that, dude. So that's, I mean, that's an immediate impact. And you can see it all the way down through there. I just remember every time he'd hit the ground, it was just like, you know, way more of it. It's just crazy. It's not like he was going slow. No. When he was jumping down there, I was just like, oh yeah, he's not going to make it. It's got to be an artery. Yeah. To spray like that. I mean, you can just see boom, 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 boom. Woo! Birds. He died right by the road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah! Oh. There he is. <laughs> Oh yeah, I thought it was forward. It's like exactly where Crystal hit that buck. What a sweet deal. That is awesome, man. It's a lot of days trying to tag a mule deer buck. And we finally got him. On the nastiest day you could ever even imagine. <laughs> Dude, that is so cool. When he was feeding out there, I could just see how dark this was and all the snow stuck on him so sweet the one thing that i really just want people to take away from this is how my opinion of mule deer has changed over the last i guess two years since i started hunting them first went with roy in 2021 and i'll be honest i thought this is gonna be easy and here we are in 2023 after a heck of a lot of stocks later finally with one down. They're just really, really good in the environment they live in. Hats off to them, every one of them, and hats off to this old boy. I'm really, really proud that that's the one that we finally got. <laughs> Great job, man. That's... <laughs> yeah, man, that shot, so... It wasn't what I was hoping for, because I did notice that it got pushed forward. But it, I mean, it took him out quick. Look at the hole, though. Oh, yeah. It's like right by his heart. I'm gonna put my tag on him. It's a lot easier to do this when you don't have cold, wet hands. Woo! Woo! All this happened this close to the road. I've been past this with Jake and you now, I don't know how many times. And that's where we end up getting one. I mean, remember the other day when we were walking down that hill? It was actually our first day here. Yeah, we went up on top of that hill and sat there. Yeah, we were walking back and I was like, look at all these beds right here. Well, they use them. I feel like we should definitely try to get a picture of him with the hill behind. Pretty sick. All right, we just got that deer taken care of. We're gonna hit the road. Meet on ice. Now, we just gotta figure out if we're gonna be able to make it out of this road. <laughs> I don't actually have any clue where we're going. I just know that we're not camping. <laughs> <laughs> not good. We're not making it nearly as far as we thought. Emergency hotel night. <laughs> We've probably already been driving for an hour. Yeah, we made it like 25 miles, maybe. <laughs> Whatever hotel costs for another night of staying here. It might be worth our lives. It might be worth our lives. Might. It's just like straight up black ice. It's just not safe. Not worth pushing it. <laughs> at home 
my family helped me butcher, which is kind of a tradition here. It's just a lot of fun to get everybody together. Even the people in my family that don't hunt are real fired up about helping out and it certainly makes life a lot easier. But like I said earlier, I have a whole new respect for mule deer. I've been thinking about it a lot since we took off from the spot where we got the buck. And the one thing that I've taken away from them that's very different than a whitetail is they're just way more likely to see you or hear you when they're in their bed. Whitetails generally bed in positions where they feel really comfortable, but they also can't see very far. There's usually a lot more moving around, but these open country mule deer have a tendency to be pretty skittish. And I think that by observing mule deer, by like driving around and stuff, they sometimes seem pretty careless, but they're in their bedding area. They're pretty dang good. And I think the biggest thing for me is just that I have a whole new respect for the deer, respect for people that hunt them all the time and are really successful at it because they certainly made us look like fools quite a bit. But also big thanks to Jake and Cole for sticking it out with me. It was, you know, pretty tough some of those days when stalks were blown or things weren't going our way, but having somebody like those two guys with helped keep my confidence up, helped keep me fired up to go again. So huge shout out to those guys. They definitely made the whole experience a lot more fun and you know, probably would have been more likely to give up without them. So thanks to those guys. Also thanks to you guys for watching these videos. I've really enjoyed hunting the deer in the really open terrain, but in future years, I'm not just gonna hunt mule deer. I'm not only gonna do that all fall. I mean, some years I may do it more than others, but I'm gonna continue to travel around and try new areas. That's what gets me fired up. Would have been off to other places had we had a little bit more success, but we didn't. Glad that we finally knocked a mule deer down. If you guys haven't ever checked the description of our videos, we got tons of links down there like to the processing stuff that we used here at the end of the video and also our website. We got tons of stuff from t-shirts, hats, all the way to hunting gear that we use when we're out in the field. So we appreciate all the support. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Cool. Yes. Cool. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah!